Welcome back to Tandem C Studios for another quick update. And I think this is the schedule we're going to be working with moving forward, guys, at least for the short future, which is one video a week on Saturdays uh, to give you guys an update of what's going on in the new studio builds and also what's going on over in the workshop because we've got the customer jobs done. It was a lot of work to get... Uh, all the customers' job, it was quite a backlog. Get those done and out. Uh, so now we can get back to work on our projects over in the workshop, and I want to give you guys coverage of that. Uh, so I thought what we'd do first is we'll head over to the workshop, uh, and then at the uh, stay tuned to the end of the video because then we'll get some studio updates. Uh, don't go anywhere. Outside of the work we're doing for the CCG 2084 series that's going to be coming to the channel, I've actually got two projects over in the workshop we need to get back to work on. So now we've got customer work done and out of the way, uh, we can get back to work on the projects we're working on, starting with a scale motor for Fern Solo's D90. Uh, if you're not familiar with Fern Solo, which I think most of you guys are, but if you're not, make sure and go check out his YouTube channel. He's got a lot of really cool stuff he's doing over there. Um, but what we need to do is build a scale motor for his for his RC four-wheel drive D90. Um, so basically, when you open the hood, you want to open up the hood and see a, a scale motor in there instead of just a normal electric motor. Basically, what we did uh, for the Gremlin. But now the Gremlin has a V8 in it, and we don't need a V8. We need an inline six. That's what came in these D90s, and so that's what we want to put uh, in Fern Solo's D90. Now. It can, you can, I could start from the ground up and build a whole new file, but why do that? There's a ton of free files out there. So don't get intimidated, guys, when you have a project like this going, I can't, I can't build a scale motor from the ground up. Don't do that. Head over to Thingiverse. Head over to some of these free uh, file sites that you can uh, get free 3D printable files from. Uh, and that's just what I did. I went over to Thingiverse, and Harley Designs had actually uploaded an inline six, a turbocharged inline six. This thing will be perfect for, for Fern's uh, D90. Now, it's not an engine cover. It's just a scale motor. So we're going to have to manipulate it a little bit. We're going to have to add to it. So what I can do... Just take that over to the Tinkercad. Just go to tinkercad.com. It's a very simple uh, 3D print, uh, 3D editable uh, piece of software, a piece of software that you can edit 3D files. There we go. That's the, probably the right way to say it. So you can take it over there. It's very easy to learn. It's very straightforward. And it's just what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take these files uh, that Harley Designs graciously uploaded to the internet. I can take them over to, to Tinkercad and I can just basically add a hollow cylinder to it, which is what we're going to do, so that it'll slide over the motor. Uh, I think we'll add some des uh, we'll add some details to it, make it look more like a Land Rover motor. We'll probably add some Land Rover uh, badging to it, that kind of stuff. Do all that over in Tinkercad. Then what I think I'm going to do is I'll 3D print it here in the shop. So I have uh, just a regular filament style. 3D printer. It makes pretty rough prints, but it'll be it'll make for great templates. So what we'll do is I'll build these files out, uh, and this is what I'm gonna do over the next week, by the way, guys. So next Saturday when we get together, uh, I hope to have the, all these templates built out, and I can show you um, kind of where we're at with with the, with the build. Uh, and by the way, if you want to see a lot more detail into that in the, throughout the week head over to the Patreon page. I'm going to actually be uploading all this over at the Patreon page. Fern Solo, longtime patron of the channel. I love doing these kind of projects for my patrons. If you're a patron out there and you have a project like this, man, reach out to me. Uh, I, I love doing this for you guys and highlighting it all over at the Patreon page, all the details. But I'll be making sure to give you guys here on YouTube updates every Saturday. So don't, don't worry. You'll also be getting the updates. If you just want a little more detail, you might head over to the Patreon page. Um, but anyways, what I'm going to do is I'll... I'll use my printer to print templates, make sure it's all nice and perfect. And then what I think I'm going to do is probably uh, reach out to Wes over at Wes, at Wes May Builds, another longtime patron of the channel, by the way. I think I'll reach out to him, uh, throw a little money his way and have him print them because he's got a much better resin printer. Um, and I'll have him print them for me. The final, once I, once I know I have exactly what I want, I can do the final print. Now you guys could do the same thing. Uh, there's a lot of sites online. So you can, once you've got your file, how you think you need it, just send it to them and they'll print it for you um, for just a little bit of money. It's, it's usually not too expensive. Um, but that, I think that's the way I'm gonna do it. And I hope to have next Saturday, I'll have the, uh, the template done, the file ready uh, to send over to Wes. Uh, by the way, Wes, might be coming your way, uh, so be ready. Um, now, also, the other project we're working on over in the shop is the Gremlin project. So this is one uh, that we're working uh, for for Lee over at Bull Gear, uh, Bull Gear RC. That is, um, if you're not, if you haven't checked out his channel, definitely make sure he does a lot of. He's doing a lot of really cool stuff over there. So make sure and go check out his channel also. But we're doing a big one tenth scale uh, scale build Gremlin build for him. I think most of you guys are familiar with it. If you're not, um, basically it's a vintage body 
uh, on an SCX-10-2 chassis. It's a, a vintage Gremlin body on an SCX-10-2 chassis. Um, and I don't think I'd updated you guys. I've actually got the driver's side door cut out, ready to be built out, ready for some some body to the for the some body to the the door to be built out and for it to be hinged. Um, I'm not sure if I had updated you on that guy, but basically we're going to be hinging it just like the other door, like the the uh, passenger side door. I've also started cutting the rear hatch, so you're going to have both doors and the rear hatch that are going to be openable on on this on this body. Um, and next Saturday, I hope to have that done. So I want to have. Uh, the the driver's side door hinged and maybe even a little bit of the body built into it um, and the rear hatch cut out maybe hinged <laughs> I don't know if I'll get that much done um, but that's that hopefully will be the next update next Saturday so I just want to let you guys know that we are back to work on the Grimman project also and that's what I'll be doing again is updating every Saturday um, again the D90 project There'll be a lot more detail over at the Patreon page, but I want to make sure and get you guys updated once a week, every Saturday, uh, the work we're doing in the shop. So basically, I'm kind of doing half days in the shop. So I'm doing half days of fundraising for the channel so that we can get CCG 2084 uh, produced. So that's what I've been doing in the mornings. Uh, and then in the afternoons of the day, I'm working over in the workshop um, to get... Uh, these project done and have updates for you guys because I, I want to keep the channel going. I want to keep you guys updated. I know you're interested and you want to see these projects completed. So I want to do just that. Um, and I thank you guys for sticking around and being patient. I know I'm not doing as many as many videos as usual, uh, but I thank you for being patient. Now, we do have updates on what's going on with the studio uh, builds. So in the mornings, like I said, I'm doing what I'm calling fundraising. Uh, basically, I'm selling off a longtime comic book collection uh, to, to raise funds so that we can build out the studio so that we can film for CCG, 20, CCG 2084, which is going to be a huge uh, series project we're going to be doing bringing to the channel here soon. Uh, I think with the way things are going, uh, I should be able to get there. Um, I think in the next month we should have the funding. Uh, the comic book market is hopping right now. Uh, it's the perfect time to do this. Um, so I've got a 40 year collection that I'm basically selling off and I've actually been uh, finding other books. Uh, I've been flipping books. So it's, a, it's crazy right now, guys. You can find $4 books and flip them for hundreds of dollars. So I'm doing that right now. And it's all for funding the CCG 2084 series, which mainly is building out Studio A outside, which I thought, let's head out there and go ahead and take a look. And you can see, basically, we've got a lot of it cleaned up. I'm starting to get things more organized. I've got a little bit of sheetrock in that I'm going to be putting up a little bit of drywall that's going to be going up uh, to get this closed in. But I've got to get th this. I, I don't know if you're new to the channel. This used to be just piled up because we had to do a quick move over here um, and th th things just got shoved. Basically, this is the garage of the house, which we're going to turn into what we're calling Studio A. Um, and so I've got it mainly cleaned out or cleaned out well enough that now I think I can get the electrician in uh, to button up the, le the electrical work. We had uh, we put in all the outlets and switches and all that. I just need uh, the final tie-in. We're going to put in a whole new box, in fact, uh, a, a, a breakout box just to power the garage or Studio A. Uh, I got a guy that's going to be coming in to do that. Once that's done, then we're going to start closing in, drywalling in. Um, but I had to get everything cleared out to be able to do that. And you see, we're going to have plenty of room in the middle. So in the middle, we're going to do all the sets for the project of CCG 24, and they're all going to be on rolling tables. So I'll be able to move them around, roll them where I need to, uh, move a set out of the way, or move a set in if I need to. So we can, I think, doing it that way. I can have a lot more, uh, a lot more sets, or a lot more cities, uh, parks, all the stuff that we're going to be filming in. So I can just slide them to the side and move into the center, whatever we're going to be filming. Where all we're, we're going to have permanent lighting and whatnot, so we can move it into basically, uh, basically what you would say like onto a sound stage um so film in this certain area and then if i need to i can roll that set out of the way roll a new set in i think that's gonna be the real uh, a really cool way to do it plus it allows me to roll everything out of the way and then i still have a garage to work in so if we i really want to get back to work on my range rover the one-to-one -one, uh, and bring that to the channel a little bit also so i can move all the sets to the side pull a car in, actually work on it. And now on the other side, so I do have, it's basically, this is, I think what you call a two and a half car garage. So you have a two car garage plus a half, like a, like a, um, uh, I, I guess like a, a work side of the garage. And I'm actually going to turn that into, 
uh, I, I, what I'm going to call a lounge, but I guess you would really call it a man cave. And I've got these old racks uh, that I used to use at, back in the day at comic book conventions uh, to display comic books and things. Um, I'm using those racks because now I'm just selling the books online. It's a lot easier. Um, I'm going to use those racks to kind of separate the two areas. So uh, as a divider for um, the filming locations and the lounge area. So I've got a fridge that's go that's going in there. Um, I'm going to put some uh, some couches and whatnot. Uh, so if people like Lee want to come by the studio and hang out or if, uh, if patrons want to come by or whatever and hang out, we'll have a lounge area to hang out. Or if I have some people helping me um, film, uh, we'll have a place to kind of hang out, kind of lounge out. And I'm going to use these racks to kind of separate them as a wall. Plus, I have a lot of hooks and hangers, so it kind of works as pegboard for me. So right now I've got a bunch of my my bicycle parts hanging on there. Um, probably not how it's going to work as a final solution, um, but I just want to kind of test out and see how those how it would work as a as pegboard. But I think that's going to uh, give me kind of a separator because uh, I, I do want to have an area, a, a man cave area, I guess you could say. I, I'd rather call it a lounge area uh, for the studio. Um, where if I want to eat lunch, that kind of stuff, uh, I'll have that area. And I don't have to leave uh, or if I'm working late night because I, I foresee myself working through the nights on this pro on these projects, working you know late night, I'd head over to the fridge and have a snack, maybe take a little break, watch some YouTube, whatever, and then hop back over, start filming again. Because this stop motion work takes a lot of time. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of hours. I want to have area to chill out. But anyway, so there's uh, I've got that going in. There's a little little projects we got to get done yet too. Um, I got to replace some some rotten wood. Um, just some little things. And then the last thing I was going to update you guys on. So here at the, at the new, what we're calling the new studio, basically this is my new home, uh, my new house that we moved into studio B is upstairs. One of the rooms upstairs inside the main house and then studio A is the garage. Now here at, at the, at the new studios, we've had a lot of critters. I, I don't, I guess Southeast Texas, we do have a lot of animals and bugs. And so we started with mice. We got rid of the mice. I caught the mice. Then we had possums. I caught the possums. We had two, uh, an entire family of possums that were living in the attic. I had two adults, five babies. I caught them, got rid of them. Then we had the windows here at the studios replaced. And when they replaced one, the, in fact, it was the Studio B window. There was about, and I didn't show you guys this. I wish I had taken photos of it. It was unreal. Um, but we had about 3,000 flies that were living in the wall. So it turns out I looked them up and now I forgot what the name of the flies are, but it's they're harmless flies that come through seasonal. Um, now that the new windows are in, they shouldn't it shouldn't be a problem moving forward. But we have thousands of flies to take care of, so that was a problem. Well, now we've got honeybees that have moved into the wall. I've got honeybees that now I've got to take care of that are living in the outside wall uh, of the main house. <laughs> so it's just one more thing. I don't know why we've turned into uh, an animal refuge. <laughs> Uh, but now I've got these honeybees, so I've got to figure out how to get. If you have, if you guys, if you have any ideas, how do you get rid of honeybees? Let me know. Um, I'd rather not have to bring somebody in to do it. Probably what the final answer is going to be. Uh, I didn't want to have to take the wall apart, which I think is what you have to do. You take the wall apart. You got to pull the honeycombs out. I don't want to do that. But if you guys have any home remedies, let me know. Uh, it would really be helpful. Hopefully, this is the last animal that we have to deal with, or animal slash insect we have to deal with here at the at the new place. But anyways. Thanks for joining me, uh, joining me again this week, guys. Um, we'll be back next Saturday. Have updates on the Gremlin, updates on uh, the D90 motor build. Uh, we'll have updates on the studio. Hopefully, I've made some progress on the studio also. Uh, and I'll have some updates. I'll try to keep you updated on CCG 2084 as far as the funding goes uh, for 2084, CCG 2084. Kind of know... Keep you updated where we're at on that. Thanks for joining me. Leave me those comments down below. YouTube really likes that. They also like you to hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. Hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up with all this. Uh, and I'll see you next, see you next week. Bye-bye.